As an official Ubi resident, today we're gonna visit some good food near my Ubi BTO with our co-host Ryan. Some I've tried and some I've been dying to try. This mature estate has more to offer than just industrial buildings. Food finders! And welcome back. Well, welcome back to Food Finders. Yes. Today we are in Ubi and this is Ryan here. As some of you may or may not know, I have moved to Ubi about a, it's been about a year. Who cares? Get off of me! I used to be in the west side at Bukit Batok. I'm sorry, you, you went from Bukit Batok? So I used to live in uh, Bukit Batok. Oh wow. Yeah. Do you just like blue places in general or...? Uh, <laughs> have you been to Ubi? Um, not particularly. I think uh, I've been to Tai Seng and Paya Lebar, but right, Ubi right. is more like the industrial area where there's a lot of like yeah. car shops and stuff. So yes, not, yeah. whenever I tell people that I stay in Ubi, first thing that comes to mind is industrial area. Does it have an MRT? Just to clarify, there is an MRT. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do some rapid fire questions oh. on... Right from the start, all right. Maybe we can adjust it. Oh no. Hey, what's up, is there? Oh, yeah. <coughs> I think it's the other side. And then this one's here. Is that it? Okay, I think now it's better. I don't know. <laughs> it's quite funny, you should include it. Oh, the, the one, it's the just, single just, just strand one, yeah, of this, hair. This bunch of, yes, uh, just, I don't know. <laughs> the amount of cars passing by. Yeah, I don't want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> what does? Ubi mean? Ubi sounds like Ube, the garlic means, yeah, yeah, uh, it, yeah, it really means the uh, tapioca, cassava, yeah. kind of thing. Oh, okay. Ubi refers to tapioca plant. What is tapioca? So, tracing back the Japanese occupation of Singapore, part of Geylang was renamed Kampong Ubi. And at that time, we used tapioca to replace rice as the staple food since it was cheaper to farm. Next, we're gonna show you an artwork. Um, guess what the artwork? Inside Ubi MRT represents a tadpole or something? Paper clips. <laughs> it really looks like a tadpole to me. Or like a root of some sort. It's a skeletal silhouette of roots. Abstraction of tapioca roots. Aimed to link the public, especially the younger generation of Ubi history and tapioca plants with wealth and nutrition and its medicinal usage. Oh wait, hold on. That... <laughs> it's there again? No, 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 not the hair, not the hair. Eye booger, eye booger now. Right eye, right eye. Oh. You clean? No, no, it's still there. Yeah, 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 the corner there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's the... Fuck... <laughs> Moisturized. <laughs> the sunscreen. So that's what we're gonna be I'm doing excited. today. Yeah. First part of the day, we are at... Tashen Bachor Mi. I've actually not tried this, but one of our writers have uh, featured this stall before. Yeah. From what I know, it's like fourth generation uh, hawker. Fourth generation? That's pretty rare, actually. Fourth generation. Uh, Taking over his dad's and then from this... That's that. I am your father. I heard you are four, four generations. Your grand grandparents also sell ba chow mi, so it's been ba chow mi all the way. Yeah. So the ba chow mi is is not the tang de. Yeah. 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 Oh. Alright, so we have a really, really generous portion of noodles today and you can see it's really like huge. I have a like I have huge hands too and this is... You know what they say stuff. about people with huge hands? It's really big. Let's compare it to the size of my head. Andre. It's really generous portion that they give you here and we do have some crispy dumplings. This is their homemade pork lard as well. Really nice braised mushrooms. Quite a decent portion of minced meat as well. And I think that they have some of that fowl fish, the dried fowl fish, which is kind of like a signature for most bar chow mein. It's like the secret sauce, you know? Most people don't realize it's there, but without it, it doesn't really quite taste like bar chow mein. Get nice and mixed too. Oh, so it looks really good as well. Mm. Oh, nice. oh wow, you weren't kidding when it said that their specialty or oh, rather what makes a good bowl of bak chow is the chili. It's really really fragrant and it's really prominent in the first flavour. Is it, is it sour? Um, it's more balanced I would say. The flavours are quite melded together so you can't really pinpoint the flavours but it's it's crazy good. It's crazy good. Seth is like chowing down right now. The little gem, the crunchy goodness. Oh! 
Oh damn! Oh my god! It's like hella juicy. The fat is kind of encapsulated in a super crunchy thin skin on the outside and the inside is just completely rendered out fat. So when you bunch into it, it's like popping boba. Very good description. I generally prefer Mi Pot because Mi Pot kind of have that chewiness and bounciness and this one's is cooked perfectly. I think it's perfect to kind of soak up all that sauces and all that lard. You kind of get little bits of like the mincemeat or like the mushrooms you can see here. Oh wow! So this is plain tree. So it's quite stacked as well as you can see. I believe there's some mushrooms in there. It's quite uh, filled up. So I believe it's pork as well. You can see there's some mushrooms and spring onions in it. It is quite juicy. It's not super dry. It's, it's pretty worth your while for $6.50 in this bowl with this kind of meat. Man, this is a really good bowl of bak chor mee, so highly recommend it if you're in the area. I mean, I don't know why you'll be in the area, but just come down for, <laughs> just for this. What do you think about the price? Though? I think it's kind of worth it if you have an intense craving for bak chor mee. Because you do have like really generous minced meat, the slices, and you do have really, really good and plump dumplings as well. Generally, I do personally think it's worth it. The lard just... I, I love lard. In Filipino, I like pork. Oh. We are now in yet another industrial office building, CP Chicken Rice. This is actually very famous and popular amongst a lot of the, the local foodie scenes. Yeah. Niven Leong is actually quite famous uh, personality and he's also been featured on Netflix Street Food Asia. Chicken Rice is the comfort food for many, many Singaporeans. Is your style Cantonese or Hainanese style? It depends on which angle you're looking at. For the mere fact that I am a Cantonese, <laughs> Okay. If let's say the guy happens to be a Hokkien, you can go with Hokkien, Hokkien chicken rice. Okay, okay. So chicken rice is chicken rice. Chicken rice is chicken rice. It's Singapore chicken rice. We have just somehow ordered half a chicken. I still ah. don't know if this is really truly half a chicken. Mutant chicken, bro. Yeah, it's a, it's a mutant, mutant chicken. Uh, aside from the chicken, we have some condiments over here. We have some really like, costly minced ginger and scallions, I believe. This really red and vibrant uh, chili sauce. We were just talking to yeah. Niven Leong. His dad was also selling chicken rice at Chinatown. His brother also does another stall, uh, oh. also called Sinki. So these are the two original ones. I think, you know, Based on conversation, he is super steeped in chicken rice yeah. history. He knows a lot like uh, about you know what goes behind it. It's not just some like random guy that like starts selling chicken rice, right? But like his family is in his blood. Did he just walk over to sneak in on us? Yes! So back to the chicken rice. It looks really juicy at first glance. Mmm! One thing I really don't like about when I get a plate of chicken rice is, is breast actually. You don't like breast? Chicken breast. I mean, <laughs> so the Thai itself, it's pretty juicy for this one. The skin isn't isn't too, I want to say gelatinous, just nice enough texture for me. I personally prefer the roasted chicken type, not too much of the what? white chicken type. Yeah, I, know, I know it's a very, guy. Oh, man. I just don't particularly like the texture of the, the white skin. But this one in particular is actually pretty good. It's pretty thin. It's not too jellyish for me. The meat is kind of like, it's not super bloody or anything like that. You can see it's kind of pink. One thing that really popped out to me was the chicken flavor. Like you yeah. can taste flavor in the chicken. A lot of times they, they boil or they steam the chicken, right? And then the chicken loses all its um, natural chicken -y essence. But this one still has a lot of flavor to the chicken itself. And that's something that is quite uncommon. I think he salted it a little bit. Can feel like a little bit of like the umami. It's really concentrated chickeny flavor. The minced it's ginger is a bit more roughly chopped. It's not like the blender minced kind. It's yeah. not just ginger and scallions. Yeah. It's actually with, else. I believe it's the chicken oil. Oh yeah, it's definitely the chicken oh, okay. oil. Wow, just the ginger and the white chicken alone is probably going to change my mind about white chicken. It's really, 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 really good. They don't give free soup, so you actually sell this for 180 or something. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see guess, like, why it's 180. That's a little bit unusual. They got mushrooms in here. You like feet? I like chicken feet. We gotta <laughs> specify here now. <laughs> It doesn't taste like chicken. It tastes like mushrooms. Yeah, but the point is like nothing over here. It's like what your standard chicken rice is. Like this chicken is flavor packed with like the chicken essence, chicken oil. This is flavor packed with a good hit of umami and saltiness. The soup is not just a plain old soup. It feels very nourishing. Really strong umami of like earthiness of that mushroom. Four out of four for me. Let's uh, move on to the egg. Oh lord, that is a uh, that is that is a. 
Ooh, that is perfect. You wouldn't expect this in a chicken rice store. Usually you see this very much in like your ramen and Japanese side. Mmm, it tastes like heaven. Let's try to eat as much as we can and we probably hit up to the next place. Third spot of the day, we are at Fun Clay Pot. Clay pot. The brand is this is quite a new spot that has opened. So there's this Lala Clay Pot uh, yeah. trend in Malaysia. Oh, Hua Tia Jiu. Like the Chinese cooking yeah. wine? This, this is like a very important ingredient in the Lala Clay Pot. Oh. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, but this is wow to yeah, me. Okay. So it's Hua Tia Jiu that you can add inside your um, clay pot. All right, the uh, clay pot has arrived. Uh, we have a crab and we have the prawn clay pot. And as promised, we got that 500 grams, which is an enormous amount, it's hefty, of lala. Also, they have um, welcome shots, I guess, of Henny, right? <laughs> Seth? No? No, it's supposed to go into the soup. So yeah. it's free flow of patiao, and then you get Henny with the clay pots as well. It's a bit too early for this, but we're gonna give it a go. Bless this crab. It smells ginger, is it like ginger inside as well? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of ginger, yeah, you're right. Straight up prawn broth, like if you get a bunch of prawn heads, you can just make it into the most concentrated broth ever. That is flavor packed. I was concerned about the honey being a bit too strong, but it's not It's not too strong. The alcohol really isn't isn't that strong. Maybe we can try adding some of the hot tail too. <coughs> yeah. Any better with the hot tail? Oh, so much better with a hot tail. The flavor profile just changes out. It kind of rounds out all the prawniness. I highly recommend that you get a, a bowl as big as this one and fill it with like half of hot tail too and just divide that up. It's definitely gonna round out the flavors. It's amazing, it's much better. So the lalas are pretty decent size as well. The lala is actually quite pleasant. It's a very clean taste and it pairs really well with the honey and the, and the broth as well. You always gotta suck the head off the prawn, yeah. Ryan likes sucking head, eh? That is really, really fresh. Like the broth kind of just goes into the head and really flavors everything. I think some of the honey also went inside because I can taste a little bit of the, the deep alcohol in this. That prawn is really, really firm. And it's not powdery at all. They're, they're quite decent in the, in the meatiness of the legs. Usually when you have like flower crabs, you get really tiny ones. It's a little bit dry because we left it in there for quite a bit taking B-roll, so I don't think it's fair to judge it like that, but overall I think it's quite good. But I do prefer the prawns over the crabs, even though I do love crabs, but the seafood flavor and everything, the prawniness just blends so well with this as well. The best combination is the prawn and the lala, together with the hua tiao and a bit of the cognac. Definitely after adding the lala to the prawn, it definitely makes it much, much better. Oh, it just exploded in my mouth. This is what exploded in my mouth. I think the water too just rounds everything up. The honey on the other hand is probably just like a light accented flavor. So we're going on to our last spot and it is not in an industrial building for once. Let's head off to the next one, Ubi. Crispy roti prata. I was trying to find good roti prata in my hood. Uh, but this is actually super low-key. It's run by an Indian couple. There's actually not much information about them online. Like even the name is just Crispy Roti, crispy roti Prata. How long have you all been here? Yeah, 17 years. 17 years? Wow. Damn. Usually you only kind of see this in like Malaysia. At least I've only seen it in Malaysia where you have that round flat iron griddle going on. And you know it's like a serious prata making business when the guy only does prata. Alright, so we got our crispy prata. Uh, we have uh, mutton curry as well as fish curry. Curious that the fish curry has like a kentang, like a potato in there. I'm really curious, I want to taste this. I think maybe we should just put the potato in to like identify. Or, or identify. No, I it. Yeah, it's not too fishy actually. It's quite a mild fish curry. It's not the, like the sour kind of fish curry. So I got one plain prata and I got one egg prata, which I think that's a standard, right? For everyone who goes to like a mama and order it. Off the bat, it's super flaky and it's really, really crunchy. You can see it just kind of crumbles out. It is good, but you know why it's good. It's like loaded up with like, I don't know, the oil, the ghee, like just basically that unhealthy goodness. If you like your prata really, really crispy, this is the place. They're lying. They will not lie. Mmm! Mutton curry is so much better in my, oh, my opinion yeah. than the fish. It's so much richer. You can really tell like, they kind of stew it with like the, the mutton bones or like the mutton meat. Egg prata. It's kind of fluffy, right? 
So if you like something a little fluffier and your friends like something crispier, this is uh, probably the one for you. So this one feels very bouncy, very fluffy. And the outside is actually kind of still a little bit crispy. Mmm! I don't know if they put one egg or two eggs in here, but this one's actually almost like an omelette encased in the prata. It's actually super, super fluffy. I think I like the egg prata even more than the plain prata. I don't know if this is a normal one egg, but from what I've eaten, this is not a normal one egg. There's a lot of... This is not normal. A lot of egg, man. This is like what all egg products aspire to be, you know what I mean? This is a definitely good spot. I was not expecting to like the egg prata more than a crispy uh, plain prata, but hands down, this is really, really, really good. There are a lot of roti prata stalls in Ubi. A lot, a lot. Like, I've tried quite a few. This is the best. I guess we just finish off this prata and we'll head off to do yeah, a yeah. little roundup of everything we've eaten today. Let's, let's finish off, Ryan, yeah. Let's go. Let's, ah, <laughs> all right, so that kind of wraps up of all the places we had today. We started off with bar chow mee, chicken rice, and then we had clay pot, and then we finally had uh, crispy roti prata. I think my favorite was probably the minced meat noodle, the bar mee. The portion was really huge, and the noodles were really nice, especially the, the lard that just pops in your mouth. That was really good. As a Ubi resident, I have to say that all food in Ubi is great. Okay, but stand out, I think the clay pot soup is a very unique dish that is not as common. Do you think Ubi has good food? Yeah, I think Ubi has great food. Like the prata, it was amazing. There was like, um, wrapped in a prata. That's there's something about the, the, the chickens. You gotta you gotta find out for us. Chicken massive chickens, man. I don't know. Massive eggs. I You're like turkeys here, that. man. So I think that wraps up um, all the food places we have explored in Ubi. Let us know if there's any other spots that we missed out in Ubi that you would like us to try out. Or also let us know any other places in Singapore or neighborhoods that you'd like us to try out. And um, we'll see you in the next one. Out. Oh, remember oh. To like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. You look so young, you know. I no thought you are, I thought you are maybe one generation after me. I, you look so young. I'm gonna be forty already, actually. Yeah, huh? soon. But you look soon. young. Uh. Usually, I, I saw your picture and half of oh. that, maybe about fifty pounds. All, all, all for those, for those online, all fake one. Uh. <laughs>